Greetings and welcome back. Uh, given the fact that <clears throat> I at least touched on veganism as it relates to dogs in my previous video, I thought it would be interesting to follow up with a <clears throat> related topic. Now, I'm not going to talk too much more about veganism. Suffice to say, uh, there were some comments made by vegans. Some of them were civil. Some of them were the typical, what I've come to expect, uh, lunatic, uh, frothing at the mouth, you're an evil murderer, blah, blah, blah kind of comments. And, um, you know, that's what I've come to expect from the uh, lunatic uh, sector of uh, veganism. Anyway, uh, well, I didn't want to talk too much about veganism. Uh, I want to talk about something that's tangentially related and people, because vegans often cite that, you know, the, the meat industry is destroying the world. Frankly, I think there are a lot more serious issues affecting the world than, uh, than eating pigs and cows. But uh, you know, I guess it's a matter of perspective, nuclear waste, uh, air pollution, things like that. But anyway, <clears throat> the, um, the uh, topic I want to talk about is eating insects. Uh, entomophagy comes from the Greek entomon and phagein to eat. And uh, believe it or not, 80% of the countries of the world, in 80% of the countries of the world, uh, people eat some form of arthropod or insect life form. <clears throat> Insects uh, are cheaper to raise and produce than any form of mammalian uh, herbivore, such as, a, such as cow or sheep. And uh, they have a, a lot of benefits as well. I mean, they tend to be much more efficient uh, providers of nutrients than are cows. I mean, for example, quote, insects reproduce at a faster rate than beef animals. A female cricket can lay from 1,200 to 1,500 eggs in three to four weeks, while for beef the ratio is four breeding animals for each market animal produced. This gives house crickets a true food conversion efficiency almost 20 times higher than beef. For this reason, and because of the essential amino acid content of insects, some people on ecological grounds propose the development of entomophagy to provide a major source of protein in human nutrition. Um, other data. Uh, insects generally have a higher food conver conversion f efficiency than more traditional meats, measured as efficiency of conversion of ingested food, or ECI. While many insects can have an energy input to protein output of around 4 to 1, raised livestock has an ratio closer of 54 to 1. And this is partially due to the fact that feed first needs to be grown in a, for most traditional livestock. Additionally, endothermic warm-blooded vertebrae, uh, vertebrae need to use a significantly greater amount of energy just to stay warm, whereas ectothermic cold-blooded plants or insects do not. An, inde um, an index which can be used as a measure of the efficiency of conversion of ingested foods to body substance. For example, only 10% of ingested food is converted to body substance by cow, uh, beef cattle versus 19%, 19 to 31 percent by silkworms and 44 percent by German cockroaches. Studies concerning the house cricket provide further evidence for the efficiency of insects as a food source. When reared at 30 degrees Celsius or more and fed a diet of equal quality to the diet used to rear conventional livestock, crickets show a food conversion twice as efficient as pigs and broiler chickens, four times that of sheep and six times higher, that, uh, higher than steers when losses in carcass trim and dressing percentage are counted. So, just some of the benefits. Um, eating insects is uh, beneficial. Um, they're very nutritious. Uh, many uh, species of insects are high in zinc, um, which is difficult to get in the diet, um, and loaded with protein. What's the big obstacle? Well, in this rare moment, uh, in this rare case, uh, the obstacle is, is cultural bias. I, I'm actually currently working on a new video about the continuity of bio biology and culture, but this is in one area, interestingly enough, where I guess cultural taboos uh, trump uh, our biological past in, in a way. Um, we know throughout human history that insects have been consumed by our ancestors. Um, it's, it's in the fossil record. And we can see it today. Uh, anyone who's been to a marketplace in any uh, medium to large size city in Thailand has seen you know, scorpions, crickets, uh, spiders, uh, water bugs. Some of them are less tasty than others. And even in a place such as uh, Mexico, you might know uh, chapulines. Uh, chapulines are uh, 
these uh, well, grasshoppers, uh, spice grasshoppers. And, uh, for example, the Aboriginal people of Australia, the Wichita, um grub. And in South Korea and China, off, often one eats uh, silkworm larvae. So it's a very common thing. It's just that in, in Europe and in North America, we tend not to do it because of convention. We don't grow up with it, and I think many people feel repulsed by it. And uh, this is something that I, I actually do believe is primarily social conditioning. Um, <clears throat> there might be some merit in arguing that we're afraid of certain insect or insects in general because of um, fear of being poisoned or stung in the case of maybe um, hornets, wasps, bees, uh, spiders, scorpions. Um, but perhaps it's the foreignness of the, of, of the shape of the insect. And I'm not going to argue that they're... My experiences with insects, which have only been few eating insects, uh, have been uh, varied. Um, so I don't know how tasty insects are on the whole. I think you need to spice them up quite a bit. But they're a lot cheaper to produce than any mammalian form of life. And they are, as I, as I cited, uh, more efficient in converting uh, their, their nutrients um, to body substance, ingested food to body substance. So I see pretty much only benefits. There are some, some minor concerns. I mean, spoilage. Um, in some cases, some kinds of insects are, are toxic. Uh, and But the biggest obstacle, of course, is cultural um, taboo. Uh, and I think uh, we would be uh, better off as a species if we could somehow get over our cultural taboo regarding eating insects. Um, there are, every now and then, these restaurants that crop up in the West. I think there's one in, in Los Angeles, a.k.a. The Pit, in, Austra um, in California that, uh, that offers exclusively um, insect uh, fare on the, on the menu. But overall, it's pretty, <clears throat> it's pretty rare. But uh, nobody really knows why we don't uh, eat uh, insects uh, in the West. There, there are some theories. Um, one uh, anthropologist, uh, Marvin Harris, suggested that eating insects is taboo in cultures that have um, other protein sources that supposedly require less work to obtain. But then you have other cultures, for example, in Botswana, um, where you can the mopane worm uh, is eaten, uh, as well as uh, cattle. I mean, they raise cattle, so it's it's difficult to say. Nobody really knows the exact source of this. Uh, the distaste, aversion, whatever you want to call it. But I think it would be a really good uh, solution. And I'll be um, providing a link to an interesting documentary film. I believe it was a BBC one, if I recall. I watched it a while back on eating insects and how it possibly could save the world. I, I'm not big on this whole, whole hyperbolic uh, claims and save the world, probably not, but it could be, uh, it could be beneficial. Um, but that said, I think eating insects en masse would be a tough sell, even though if we invested the resources and energy in mass producers like crickets, uh, scorpions, um, well, technically aren't insects, they're arachnids or arthropods, or a subspecies of arthropod, um, certain forms of, uh, of grub, I guess, that um, this would be a better option. It probably would even uh, be hmm, more satisfactory to certain vegans. Uh, I don't, unlike vegans, I don't, uh, I make a distinction uh, in eating or harming certain animals. I think the neurological complexity of animal of an animal should be the basis of our relationship to that animal. So uh, after arriving at this understanding that a capa the capacity for feeling pain is, is, is uh, and being aware in general of, of danger is, is highly, is very much related to your, your the neurological capacity, the complexity of the brain of an animal. Um, I would not eat, for example, whales, even though I have in the past tried whale meat. I would not, uh, I, 
I don't necessarily regret it, but I wouldn't do it again. Uh, after having studied since then whales in great depth, I just think they're neurologically feel far too complex uh, to simply well, eat. And uh, yeah, but on the other hand, um, something like an insect has uh, insects are, are dumb. Insects are not smart. They're extremely simple animals. Uh, you don't need to feel bad at all about uh, eating insects. And so maybe this would be a, uh, a benefit to people who are concerned about um, harming animals but also don't want to uh, have any nutritional deficits and, and realize that veganism is not the, the best way to nourish yourself. Um, something to consider. But yeah, entomophagy, entomophagy is... Um, is a, I think, an overall good idea, um, but it's going to be a tough sell, I think, when the luxury of meat and of, of other things, other, and I'll, I'll probably, I probably, if ever there were some insurgence of uh, insect products on the market, I probably would eat both. I would eat, occasionally I would eat insects, variety, and, and meat, so I think even then, exclusively in, in, eating insects is probably not going to happen in in the Western diet, but in poor countries, you can see this as, a, as an option of <clears throat> of really um, turning the tide on hunger and, and uh, issues like that, I think. Anyway, I don't want to talk too much about this. This is, of course, not related to traditional subjects I cover on this channel. But it is interesting and something to consider. If you haven't tried insects, um, at least try them. Uh, some kind of insects. Stay away from water bugs. And uh, scorpions aren't too bad. They're kind of like crustaceans, and I mean, after all, many of us eat shrimp and some such things, so it's not too dissimilar. Uh, until the next time, uh, may the guns watch over you.